Watch Mr. Wizard. That's what all the kids in the neighborhood call him because he shows them the magic and mystery of science and everyday living. Mr. Wizard? Hi, Doc. Come on. Hi, Mr. Wizard. Hi. See that? That's a pigeon wing that I have clamped to the end of a stick. And here's some air, see? Yeah. I'm going to take the air and put it over the top of the wing. You watch what happens. Stuff's going off. Yeah, yeah, that's... So you see, this is one of the reasons why a bird can fly, is because of the air going over the top of the wing. Now, today you and I are going to uh, investigate how a bird flies. And uh, we'll really actually see some film later on uh, that I shot trying to show you how a bird flies in slow motion. But before we begin with how a bird flies, maybe we ought to find out what a bird is. What's a bird? Well, a bird, bird flies. An animal that flies, yeah, mean? An animal that flies. Insects fly, of course. Mm -hmm. So but does a bat. Birds have feathers. And birds have feathers, right? Uh, a bat doesn't have feathers, does it? No, it doesn't. And insects don't have feathers. No. The other things that fly. So birds are the only have feathers. Birds, birds are the birds only, are only animals in the world that have feathers. They are also one of the few that fly, especially large ones. Yeah. Um, Warm-blooded and with feathers. Well, let us now begin to investigate how a bird has a, the bird's body has adapted for flight. And we'll start by looking inside at the bird's skeleton. There's the bird's skeleton. Now notice, and here down here is a rat skeleton. These are very delicate bones. So uh, I want you to point out some things that you notice about them. When you do, use my pencil, will you, so that you don't. Um, break the bones. I got these from Dr. Cheraper over at uh, New York University, and I don't want to break them for him. Now, here, look at the rat skeleton and at the bird skeleton and see how you notice the, that the bird skeleton is adapted for flight. How is it different than the rat? Well, the first thing I notice is that the rat has four feet on the mm -hmm. ground. Four feet on the ground, yeah. right. And then the bird only has two feet, actually. Well, he really has four, but, it's, but the others are really the wings. Right. So you wouldn't call them feet no. up there, but the four appendages, he has the same number as the rat, but two are adapted for flight. All right, yeah. very uh, different. Uh, oh, what well, else? Well, the next thing I see is the neck is much different because on the rat, it's small. Mm, and quite short, stubborn. yeah. And on the bird, it's a long neck. Mm. Why, would winding. That, why would that help him fly? Mm. For maneuverability, so right. we can move it. Also, of course, this means that a, he, a relatively light thing is sticking up, and you'll see later mm. when we investigate the uh, center of gravity. Anything else? Well, the tail is much different because on the rat it's long and usually thin, mm -hmm. but on the bird it's, it's short here without mm -hmm. the feathers. Notice, by the way, let me have the pencil there for a minute. Notice, by the way, that the that the tail is not fixed to the to the skeleton, the body of the skeleton itself. That it's out here and is quite maneuverable. And you'll see later in the film how uh, important this is to the bird because he uses it both as a rudder and as a uh, brake. Now. Uh, I mentioned center of gravity here. Take the pencil now and see if you can point to where you think the center of gravity of the rat would be. Well, I guess it would be about here, wouldn't it? Because right, it's centered around there. Mm -hmm. In other words, that's where the weight would seem to be concentrated. Yeah. Now look at the, at the pigeon. Well, it, it seems different because there's more weight down below. It would mm -hmm. be down here, actually. Right, right in there someplace. That's right. Well, what difference would that make in flight? Well, he, had a, he would have a low center of gravity then. Mm -hmm. Well, so if all things being equal, if he just sort of stopped, what would happen? He'd end up with yeah, his feet sweet. automatically down on the ground, wouldn't he? Because the mm -hmm. point of support, in this case, is going to be the wing that would be stretched out here. That's right. Okay. So you see, the, the bone structure alone of the pigeon is very uniquely adapted to flight. Well, now, here, take the pencil again, because this yeah. time we'll get rid of the rat, and we'll put some uh, feathers on the skeleton. <laughs> And there is the, real is the real stuffed pigeon. Now, what differences do you notice between the inside structure, the skeleton, and the general contour of the bird now yeah. that you put something on it? Well, it seems to be streamlined. It goes nice, easy curves. Doesn't it, though? Down there, not like the skeleton, though. Yeah. Why, why would that be important? Well, for fast, um, to move fast through the air when it's flying. Yeah, it's moving through it's a fluid, isn't it? Yes. So it's streamlined yeah. like a fish. That's right. Yeah. And so the bird is very... Uh, streamline. Okay, anything else? Well, the wings are very long here. They come all the way down to yeah. down here, and on the skeleton, they're just very short. Yeah, they're all folded up there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So you know, this is folded up in the same way, isn't it, as far as the yeah. bones are concerned? But they're long flight feathers, very lightweight things that help them fly. And we'll see how they use that. That's an important difference. Notice, uh, by the way, the front end of the bird here and the front end of the bird over there in the skeleton. Oh, you mean the breast? Yes, oh. that, that thing looks like well, a keel of a sailboat. This It's very full here, look. Yes. Down in here. Yeah. And over in the skeleton, it's just just a star there. Yeah, well, you, all you can see is that breast bone. bone that sticks out over there and the wishbone in the front there. Yeah. Well, now, this is a very important part of, of all birds, um, this breast, uh, because... Here, where it's very full, is where the flight muscles are. Now, I've got a bird flying here. Excuse me a minute. Okay. See, so here's a pigeon now. Uh, this time in flight position so that you can see the important thing, uh, the important muscular activity of the bird is the flight. The idea of being able to pull the wing down. And the flight muscles are the breast muscles right here. In fact, the muscle on this side and the muscle on that side are called pectoralis major. And they account for about a fifth of the weight of the bird. Wow, One fifth of the weight of the bird. So they need very strong muscles so they, to fly. Very strong muscles to fly. Uh, the, there's a pectoralis minor that raises the wing. And that, those two together are what you call the breast. And you notice oh. that always when you eat a bird, the, the breast is always an important right. part. Now, you, you know there's, the, there's dark and, and light meat? Yes, in the chicken, for right. instance, you know? Well, it, it happens that in a chicken, a bird that does not fly, the breast is not used for flight. Therefore, it is white meat because it is sort of atrophied over the years and been developed for a strong muscle in the front that does not fly. But what does a chicken use to get around with? It's legs. Legs, right? And they're dark meat. So whenever you see a bird, uh, the meat of a bird, and it's dark meat, you know that this is the muscle that the bird uses to get around. In a duck, for instance, the, the breast is dark. And the yes. legs, too, because they're, they're muscles that are full of a lot of, of uh, blood vessels. And when they're cooked, of course, they become dark. So it's the dark meat that is the meat that does the work of the muscles. It has the muscles. Right. Now, a bird usually flies pretty fast, doesn't it? The wings go up yeah. rather fast and so forth. Um, maybe this will help uh, explain uh, why the heartbeat of the bird is very fast. A bird sitting like that one down there, let's say, would have a heartbeat of a couple hundred times a second, or a minute. A yeah, do you know what? how fast your heart beats, or how people? Isn't it 20? No, 60, 70, oh, something six, like uh, that. I'm, that's right. 60 or 70 times a minute. The bird, in when it's under stress, its heart can beat up to 1,000 times thousand? a minute. Yeah. Now, why do you suppose that is? Well, could it be that it has to pump a lot of blood to all its parts why? in its body? Because it, they're all moving, it, um, flapping, you know, moving their wings. Mm -hmm. And they have to move them very fast yeah. to fly. Well, how about even when it perches or uh, jumps from one branch to another or something? Oh, yes. Nice very nice. fast. Enough. Everything it's is moving movements. very, very quickly. So therefore, it needs lots of blood in order to get food for all the cells. Okay, well, that's the heart. Now, how about breathing? And air, breathing. It, it, in order for the bird to get oxygen to all the parts of the cells, it must breathe in air. That's and it does this at a very fast rate, about 29 or so uh, a minute. 29? And we breathe at, uh, oh, 14, 15, 16, 20, something like that. But the important thing about the breathing is what happens inside. Up here is a chart, a sort of a diagrammatic or schematic version of what happens inside the bird's lungs. Here's the neck part, you know, the trachea, yeah. where the air comes in, the windpipe, you might call it. Here are the two bronchial tubes, and here, these dark sections, are the lungs. What, what are these extra ones? I've, I haven't, pictures I've seen of our hearts that we don't have them. Hmm? No, on our lungs? No, we don't yes. have things like this coming off our lungs. Uh, I mean, the bird does, and they're full of air, you see, because they're all attached yeah. to the lungs here. And notice they even go out over here into the bone, you some of the bones. You mean they have air in the bones? Right. Some of the bones are hollow and are filled with air. Now, why do you suppose the bird has extra air sacs inside? Well, to make them very light so we can fly. Well, that seems logical, doesn't it, that yeah. it would make lighter. But I, scientists have found that this is probably not why it developed. The reason why it probably developed was this. The bird has a high temperature of 102 to about 112 or so. With a high temperature and with this high living rate, it has to get rid of heat. It has no perspiration glands. You haven't heard of a sweaty bird, have you? No. <laughs> yeah. uh, the reason, if they can't perspire, so they have to get rid of heat somehow. So as all this air flows into all these air sacs in among the organs, the air absorbs heat. And of course, when the air goes out, it takes the heat out too. Oh, I see. So it's air cooled. No, oh, it cools in itself. In internal air cooling with air sacs. And, of course, it, it uh, has a high rate of oxygen intake uh, into its blood. Its lungs are extremely efficient, and these air sacs, of course, help to keep it cool. 
But anyway, that'll give you some idea of the internal structure uh, of the bird. And you can see how, how beautifully it's adapted for flight. Um, also, you now see something about the muscle and how that works. Let's look at the outside. If you were going to design some kind of fabric or covering or something uh, for a machine that flew or flies, what would, you, what would it have to be? Well, couldn't First, be. Yeah. Like well, I mean, what is it that a feather has to be in order to be efficient as a covering for well, a flying machine? It has to be light. Light. That's extremely important. If you had big, heavy scales or something, it wouldn't, it you know, wouldn't be. Anything else? Well. Notice birds, they stay out in the winter all the time? Yes. Well, they have to, I guess they have to have warmth. Warmth. Have you ever heard of eider down? The kind of yeah. feathers that are extremely, well, they're, they're very good insulation feathers. They must be very smooth. Well, let's take a look at, some, at a feather under the microscope to see how it is adapted specifically for this idea of a sort of a tight-knit mesh um, that is waterproof and all the rest of it and extremely lightweight. What I've done is to take a feather and put it under the microscope. I have to put some uh, solution on it to make sure that it's transparent before we start. You want to turn the microscope on over there? That's fine. Oh. Thank you. Now, what I've done is to take a pe just a, a little tiny piece of feather, and I'll show you a little piece when I get it set up here. There, you see the little piece of feather here? Okay, I'm going to put that under the microscope now, and look at it, and magnify it, first of all, about 35 times. Now, see that? Those ridges that you see there? Let me get yeah. up here. Those ridges there. Here's the feather I took it from, an ordinary uh, chicken sort of like feather. What I did was to take a little section like this. You see that section right there? And these black lines that you're seeing here are the, the, the parts of the feather that go up this way. Not this part. Oh. These little sort of ribs right here Each are one. these black lines. And these little lines in between are the little things that are in between these two that you can't even see. So that's what these things are right up here. I see. Now, let's look a little closer at these. I'll switch over now to the next magnification. Now we're looking at it at about 75 times magnified. See how they interlo uh, interlock one over the top of the other? Now, let's go down to, and here's the very tip end here. Now let's go up to one more magnification. Here is magnified now about 150 times. Right there on the end, let me move it around and see if I can find it. There are some pretty good ones. Getting closer detail. Yes, much closer detail. Let me check the microscope to make sure it's lined up so we can get it as sharp as possible. Now, right in here, you see those little, little bumps that stick up? Let me get it as sharp as I can. Now, I'll pan along here. See those little hooks? There, yes. there, there's one right there. See it? Yeah. See yes. those little hooks? Well, those are in one, uh, on one side of that rib, that feather that we've seen. There's some more. See, there's a good group right mm. in there. See, there's another one there. Well, now, those are all sticking out on the feathers, on the parts of the feather that go this way. Now, I'll go down and... There, you see, there they are hooked together. There are where those hooks are. And you see what they've done? They've hooked onto the part of the feather coming down from this one. You mean they hooked together? Yes, they're hooked together like a whole series of sort of like chain mail. Watch, I'll go down all the way to the other side of the feather. And you'll see the op the other end. <laughs> the yeah. long feather. There. See, no hooks. So, so the, but from the, other, the next feather hooks right. onto The next section of the feather hooks onto these. Now watch, I'll go back up to the other side and you'll see there are the hooks again. There they are, see them? Now those hooks now, hook onto, and I'll go back up to the other magnification again. I'm gonna move my mirror over. Those hooks ho hook on to the next section. See down there now? There you can see they're yeah. hooked together. And when we go back up, still higher. Now you can get some idea. Here now is a contour, or uh, the type of feather that covers the outside of the bird, is a layer of very, very thin uh, structures meshed together so that uh, it is extremely light, extremely strong, 
and ideally adapted for flight. Anyway, that's if you have a microscope or a magnifying glass at home, why well, you uh, can look at the um, structures like this and see them adapted for flight. So even the outside covering, when you look at it with a microscope, is especially well suited for flight. Now let's look at actually what happens as the bird begins to fly. Okay. You see, we've got the internal Here structures the in the outside now. Now let's look at what actually happens when it flies. In the wing of the bird really serves two functions. One, it has to have lift of some kind. Gravity is pulling down on it, isn't it? Yeah. If something didn't happen, it would go clunk to the ground. <laughs> and the lift is like a lift in an airplane. How do you get lift, you know? Well, the air goes over. The air has to speed over the wing, doesn't it go fast? And the inside of the wing, this section right here, see how it's shaped like a wing? Like the wing of an airplane, obviously, it's shaped like a wing. See, it's curved over here beautifully? Oh, yes. Well, that curve now means that air, when it goes across the top of this wing, creates lift over here, and that's what helps hold the bird up. Well, now, let us see if we can duplicate that with this wing that I had attached over here. Run around over here now and get that okay. pump. You can run around over okay. here so you see if you can work it. See, here is the pump where you can, we can blow air out of there. And here is the, the wing of a pigeon. Now, I have it attached here so that it's heavier. See, it'll, it'll actually flop down. I've counterweighted on the other side so that part of the weight is supported by gravity on the other side. So what you do is you take the, here, take this thing and bring, it over, bring the air so that you get the air to, to speed up and hit the, about right here. Don't hit underneath, although there, some air can hit underneath. But all we have to do is get the air to go over the top here and we'll see if we can't get the wing to fly. Okay, okay. go ahead. See it? In fact, no, notice, I'll, I'll hold it this time. And notice, bring the thing over here. Notice these feathers stand up. See how they're pulled up? The lift is pulling them up this way. Go ahead, try it again. So the inside of the wing now is adapted beautifully for getting this lift. If only the, air, the wing moves through the air. So our problem now is how is the bird going to move through the air? Well, come on around over here now. We'll see. Okay. Uh, because what, this time we have to find out how is this bird... We can understand that if we can get the air to go across the top of the wing, fine, the bird will stay up. That's or right. if we can get the bird to move through the air, we can stay up. It has but to start. How does the bird move forward? That's the problem. Now, a long time ago, people thought that they sort of rode with their wings, you know, pushed themselves through the air like uh, with an oar. But it's not quite true. The tip ends of the feathers here are the things that make the bird... I'll go forward. Oh, before we get that far, let's assume that the bird is now flying, and it, when it's going to land, you'll notice in the pictures coming up that the bird lands kind of like this. And he has a problem when he does that. As he tips this way more and more, pretty soon the air, as he moves forward, no longer goes over the wings smoothly, but now begins to burble and, and make bubbles and, and swirling around over here, so that pretty soon the lift is destroyed and he would plunk down this way, or stall, they call it in airplane language. So he has a special little thing on the end here called the alula. You see those feathers that are darker there? Feathers. Well, there are a little okay. more than that, but the, the bird can open them like this. See, they pull open like that, and he can move them forward. Well, when he does that, air that's coming over the wing hits those feathers and makes the air go across the wing here and smooths out all that turbulence. Oh, so you don't have the bubble. So we don't have that burbling, burbling. And, and, and swirling, and he, he helps maintain lift. So when the bird is taking off or landing, and sailing sometimes, you'll see in the film, he puts those little feathers forward, called the alula, and that helps him from stalling. Okay, now our problem is, how are we going to get the bird to move forward? And these feathers out here in the end work like propellers. You mean they, go, they swirl around? Well, they don't swirl around like a propeller, but they do this somewhat. In fact, let's go over here and look at a series of pictures that I took of Maxi, our parrot. Uh, and uh, you'll... Let me get my pencil out. Let me get over here. Here is the first picture up here. You see the wing is in the top position. See some of the feathers are missing here because we cut one of his wings, the feathers off of one of his wings so he can't fly oh. so hard and hurt himself in the house. But let's look at this wing. Here it is in the top position. Okay. Now, these feathers are slightly open because here's what's going to happen. As the wing comes down, these feathers open up and the front end points downward. Downward? 
downward, so uh, these act like propellers, or little oars, pushing the bird forward as the wing is brought downward and forward. See, here it is coming downward, and it's also moving in this direction. See, here are the propeller feathers on the end. Now look, see how it's coming forward? Oh, yes. See, and here the propellers are wide open, and the air, as it flows through here and hits these, pushes the bird forward. Now watch when he gets to the bottom of the stroke. He starts closing in. Now the wings are now at the bottom of the stroke. Now these open feathers now begin to turn, and look how they become. He's now going yeah. up and backwards, like in that direction. And when he does that, he opens these feathers, because as he does this, he doesn't want the air that's up here to hold the wing back. So he opens the feather so the air can go through it. Oh, so it's uh, still goes. Yeah, so now you see he's in the top position, ready to come back right. down to make a new downstroke over here. So that if you, if you, uh, when you look at the film now, I want you to notice that the wing does not flap up and down like most people think, but really goes forward and down and backward and up, forward and down. And if you notice it, that when you see the bird fly, it sort of makes a oval shape as he flies through the air. Now, I have taken some pictures here, and we're going to look at them. Uh, first, in normal speed, 24 frames in a second. There are, uh, first of all, takeoffs, and then some flying around, and finally some landings. And I want you to look for, first, the high speed, the circular idea, look for the Alula, and notice how he uses the wing. Okay? Okay. Uh, you want to stand there and get ready with the light? I want to pull over on the screen here so we can see it. Okay, you want to turn okay. on the light? Yeah. Okay. Now come on over here. Now, here it is at 24 frames. They're going very fast. Yes, aren't they going very fast? It's hard to watch them now. Well, this is one of the reasons why they've been difficult to study in the past. If you don't have some method of slowing them down, their movements are so quick, so fast, that it's hard to study them. You can see the high metabolism you said yes, before. Right. Now, the, the Alula was out there, but you couldn't see it because the whole thing moved too fast. So I shot these series of pictures so you get some idea of what the real speed is like. There they're going probably 30 or 40 miles an hour. Wow. Pretty fast. Very fast indeed. Carrier pigeons have been clocked up to 60 miles an hour, and some birds mm -hmm. even faster than that. Now, there you can see the use of the tail. Notice how it acted as a brake first, and now is acting as a rudder. Here comes a landing. But you see how difficult it is to study this? It moves so quickly. How quickly he recovered and started walking. Well, these birds were in a, in a pigeon coop, and uh, when I moved up on him like this, why, he got a little frightened. But rather than take off, notice these birds are so tame that they feel secure inside the coop. So he yeah. went into the coop. Now we'll see the same sorts of pictures, this time shot at 64 frames in a second, or almost one-third normal speed. See his wings hitting together? They seem to be slapping. Yes. Each other. In fact, when they take off, sometimes you can hear them slap. Is that very hard? Yeah, they're hitting them together so hard they come down together and meet at the bottom. Now, there he is flying. I don't know what he... Go ahead. He slides. Here are a whole bunch taking off. Now, notice the control when they land on the roof. As you can see, the, t the um, tail coming. See in. how it works as a brake? Now watch the tail on this one. Now see the round circular motion there? Oh yes. It, that's the it's that's just, for the first just yeah, just movement. just enough so that you can see there's an oval on the wing tip. Now here here's one coming downhill. He glides right toward the camera. Watch. See, he doesn't have to flap his wings very much because he's going downhill, like they sliding. Bring the wings. Well, they're wood. controlling it, you see. Now watch, he's going to go back uphill again, so he's got to pump his wings. They almost look like gulls because the wing beat of a gull is about this frequency. Oh, that's right. But the pigeon member is going about three times the speed. Now watch the tail on this one. Well, he uses it to maneuver Almost around. like a fan, isn't it, there? He uses it yes. as a rudder in that case. Almost ran into some other birds. Notice the birds move, move so fast that they, they and are, have such quick control that they, you never hear of a bird colliding in the air. Watch that tail now. 
The term is over. You can see the bottom part of the tail start moving inward mm -hmm. when they want to uh, land. So with these pictures, you get some idea uh, that certainly we've looked at the internal structure of the birds and you understand the, something about the mechanism inside that, that makes them ideally adapted for flight, the high metabolism, the high heartbeat, the high breathing, the special structure of the bone, the air sacs, the feathers that are on the outside. Now watch the alula and see if you can see them in these. See them? They oh, yeah, just notice them so. coming out? Now on some of the landing pictures that are coming up now, as they're coming in, to prevent themselves from stalling, you'll be able to see the alula quite well. See in the front bird there? Oh, yes. There, oh, you can yeah. see two on each side. One on each side. Now, here are some more landings coming up. You'll see that alula again. The telephone poles there and telephone wires going by in the background give you some idea of the speed. And remember, the pigeon is going three times faster than this, almost. You can see the old... There, the Azula is very... There. Yes, you can see it quite well. See that tail as a break now? It's very important. Yes. It's very important. It's much tail. more important than most people realize. And he goes around again. Notice his tail no longer is a break, but now is a rudder. And it's parallel mm -hmm. to his body, actually. The birds do this all with, with such ease. Look at this. They, they change position very quickly. Very quickly. And yet, go over here and watch this one. They just go from one place to the other, how they can sort of hover. Now one comes in and watch him use his tail as a brake and then change his mind. And then it becomes a rudder. Oh, yes. And he's going around again. And he goes around again. Now the tail becomes a, uh, a brake again. And here's my favorite of all. Watch this beautiful bird. He just about stays there. Yeah, hovering away. Okay, you want to get the light over there, please? Okay. Well, I guess you get some idea, at least now, how the, uh, the whole mechanism of the bird is put together, the idea of the, the internal business, the, the uh, heartbeat very fast, the respiration very fast. Uh, the air sacs inside, the hollow bones, the smooth, strong covering outside feathers, uh, the complete maneuverability of the bird, the fact that it, it has extremely good eyesight so that it can maneuver and, and control uh, and watch out for danger. And, you know, they dart through trees and get yes. through branches and everything so easily. And then, of course, the wing works as an oval. And we're not flapping, yeah. but as an oval. To lift, on the, lift on the inside and forward motion on the outside. See if you can get that lift going over here again now. Okay. So make sure you understand it. The inside now is a lift. You get the air to speed up right over here on the inside of the wing, and you'll get this bird wing to fly. Watch Mr. Wizard is presented each week at this time by the Public Affairs Department of the NBC Television Network in cooperation with New York University.